So good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Um, you know, I think one of the things I've really appreciated about this conference is getting to talk with some of you and um, really hearing about how we have this common tool set in terms of um, Six Sigma and Lean and um, all of the change management um, techniques and uh, initiatives that we run, but uh, that we have to apply it in different ways. So I want to talk to you about um, an application that is probably a little bit unusual at Vanguard, but I think um, will be another way to think about um, how to incorporate all of the tools that we have in our toolkit um, in new and different creative ways. So um, let me uh, get started here. Um, I have to explain because um, you know, some of you, I think, I think most of you are probably from the U.S. and know what Vanguard is, right? Um, mutual fund. But some of you um, from abroad may not know what Vanguard is. And um, so let me talk a little bit about the company. Um, so we are a mutual fund provider, um, a global mutual fund provider. Um, and uh, we have about $3.5 trillion um, in assets under management. The company is um, about 14,000 employees around the world. And um, so what I'm going to talk about is my little portion of this world, um, which resides in investment management. And so think about the part of the company that is um, the engine for actually making the decisions on what securities go into the mutual funds. Okay. So that's what investment management group is. But I don't want to mislead you. Our um, process improvement journey at Vanguard has a very long history and started very early. So it started in 1990. Um, and you can see like there's been a lot of milestones along the way, but this really happened in other parts of the company. So um, we had very strong support from our CEO on down about, uh, at that time, Six Sigma, right? And um, those efforts there. And we rolled that out to all different parts of our company. It was um, great in our retail division. It was great in institutional. It worked in IT. Um, so you can see there are parts of the company that really lend itself to these types of process improvements. So our call centers, for example, or our, um, our uh, statements and uh, document processing centers. Uh, those were all places where we derived a lot of benefits from uh, continuous improvement. So one of the places where it didn't really take hold was in investment management. Um, and, you know, I think that's because the way that we have to think about what we're doing in investment management is materially different from the way that we think about, you know, what we're producing in um, other parts of the company that have a, a tangible product. So think about uh, investment management as a group whose main product, right, is judgment. And it's very specialized and technical knowledge that informs that judgment, right? So the product itself is really different. And the, uh, the clients are not, are kind of a step removed from our customers, right? So clients are our portfolio managers, our analysts, our traders, um, and uh, our customers are those who invest in, in the funds. So, you know, what does business transformation and operational excellence look like in an organization like that, right? So, in, uh, so you see this timeline here. This was um, an effort that was very top-down uh, around uh, process improvement at Vanguard. And it had a lot of support. And it led in 2013, where this uh, timeline uh, drops off, it had a lot of um, support and got rolled out into investment management. So it started because uh, 
the leadership at Vanguard believed in this proposition and wanted to also incorporate it into investment management. So um, in 2013, we started something called Process Excellence in Investment Management. And uh, I really see this journey as an evolution. So uh, it, it started as an understanding and an optimization of what our value proposition really is. It evolved into envisioning and enacting the future. And then the current phase that we're in is really aligning our people, process, and technology to really effectuate that future. So when we started this organization, um, we took people from our Center for Excellence, which is a corporate team that is deployed to all of the different functions around um, the company to do this process excellence work and um, had one of their uh, master black belts head a team. Um, but the difference was they were fully housed in investment management. So they became employees within the investment management division as opposed to rolling up to corporate. The reason we did that was because it's really important to have that wholesale buy-in, especially for this group of professionals who have some skepticism about what you know, operations could do for their value proposition. Because for them, it's all about research, you know, trading. Um, it's all about what you can get by the knowledge in your head. So I was not the, um, the leader of this group when it started. In fact, I was their client. <laughs> I was a municipal bond analyst in fixed income. So I saw it from the other side of the table. Um, but uh, the proposition here, and uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the clients. So the clients here are the equity investment group who's responsible for like our index funds, S&P 500, um, many of our uh, funds there. I think portfolio managers, analysts, traders, uh, our quantitative equity group, which um, manages our um, algorithm-based funds, and again, portfolio managers, traders, analysts. Uh, fixed income group, our active bond funds here. Um, so that's another facet of the same theme. Um, investment strategy group, which leads our investment research. Risk management group, which um, measures the investment and operational risks that we're taking when we invest in um, our securities. And then our Global Investment Shared Services Group, uh, which is where Process Excellence lives. And this is the group which provides the technology and the infrastructure to enable all of our, um, all of our trading and investment. Uh, so this is also the group um, where business technology lives, and business technology is the bridge to IT. Okay, so that gives you a landscape of who our clients are. Um, but now we have to define like what's this value proposition, and, and how can operational excellence help here, right? So the easiest way to do that is to go back to what differentiates Vanguard and what our credo is, which is to take a stand for all investors and to give them the best chance for investment success. And what does that mean? So in, it means best performance adjusted for risk at the lowest cost. So performance is important and that's what uh, the analysts, traders, and portfolio managers generally concentrate on, but then so is risk, so is cost, right? So that gave us a platform for explaining 
what operational excellence could do for investment management. There are other factors that kind of helped us out too. So the business uh, is a victim of its own success. We're growing, right? Um, and we have um, three portfolio management locations in Malvern, London, and Melbourne. Uh, six product domiciles, and we're on 47 world exchanges. So globalization. The investment management group was feeling the effects of globalization and actually wanted to harness the power of globalization uh, and not just feel the pain of it, right? So that it could really expand its reach in terms of um, its trading operations. So that was a natural way to kind of get into the operational excellence, um, business transformation work. Um, and we used it, we used it um, quite well. Uh, so what we did is we concentrated on operational efficiencies, projects around operational efficiencies where we could show tangible results and we built our reputation. And that was great. And uh, we made some significant, uh, significant advances in uh, proving that we had a place in this organization and that we could bring value to this organization. However, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough because we weren't doing something in this group. And that takes me to my tenure as uh, a part of uh, the head of um, process excellence. It wasn't enough because while the portfolio managers, traders, and analysts were managing the day-to-day -day funds, what they weren't doing was envisioning the future and really uh, thinking about their competitors and what their competitors were doing in that space and how they uh, should use their productive uh, paranoia you know, to make sure that Vanguard's around for, for the next 40 years. So that's something where I wanted my team to focus. And you can see it's a small team, right? It's um, a fairly small team. And um, what I wanted us to do was to go from a state where we were very reactive, taking points of pain types of projects from our uh, clients and embedding ourselves in the organizations, in the various business lines, so that we could be the ones coming up with the um, improvement opportunities. And the only way to do that is to change the model. So we went to a relationship manager model. We aligned process experts with each of the business lines. We said, we'll invest here. We're not going to do rotations here. These guys are here for the long term. You know, we're not going to rotate them out on you. They're going to learn your business. They're going to evolve your business. They're going to inform your business. And, you know, they're going to know kind of like what the headlines are. What are the things that you're really trying to drive within your, within your organization? And they're going to actively participate in coming up with what those improvement opportunities should be. So we rationalize, this, I call this institutionalization, right? I, um, we rationalize the work that we did. It was both points of pain and kind of larger strategic projects. And um, we uh, looked at that book of portfolio of work together. Okay, so then beyond that, there was more opportunity. And the opportunity had to do with really aligning to the whole department, treating this like a system, right? Each of those uh, business lines are a part of investment management group. An investment management group has to have some goals, lowering risk, improving fund performance, and growing, promoting efficient growth. And under those goals are specific objectives. What enables those objectives and those goals are the people, the process, and the technology. So I had to lay this vision out and say, you know what? While we're doing great, 
in each of our silos, we have to work as a system because we're all investment management group, right? So this next iteration, this next evolution, is about putting the people, process, and technology, those enablers, together, and really <coughs> concentrating on the intersection between the two. Uh, the way that we're addressing that and the way that we're doing that is through this business design cycle where our long-term business design is related to our strategic imperatives for the department and informs the projects that we do on a day-to-day day -day basis. Along with that, we're also realigning the way that our organizations are, are put together. So you'll see um, that the, the business process and technology piece is where we house our process excellence our, um, group as well as our technology, business technology change group. Program leadership is around um, big uh, technology projects um, that are kind of separate and apart um, from those day-to-day -day operations. There's a global data team, and importantly, there's this new innovation and experimentation team. So that happened, and that got created because we redefined the, what we were doing within IMG. We are saying, look, we need to envision the, the future. We need to think about FinTech. We need to um, really take people, process, and technology and put it together as the base to fulfill the objectives of investment management group, which align to what we're trying to produce. So that's my story. <laughs> So when you embedded those folks into those different functional areas, yep. did you have any obstacles or challenges or pushback from leaders in those areas? Yeah, but guess what my answer is? Well, so I told you I was a municipal bond analyst before I headed up this team. So um, that was really helpful because I could truthfully say, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what your challenges are. and. You know, here's how I propose we take care of it or we address it, right? So um, the biggest obstacle is always time right, with these professionals. They um, need a lot of time to do the day-to-day -day work that they do, and they don't want to spend time doing anything other than analyzing securities. So my answer to something like that is, okay, let my team do the heavy lifting. We'll do 80-20 in terms of the distribution of work. I need you to do 20 though. Can you do 20? Any other questions? All right, thank you, Jimmy.